you enjoy mushroom hunting and you're just getting started, this video is for you. So I'm going to show you some different finds uh, over the last several weeks and uh, hopefully in a somewhat entertaining video as much as mushroom hunting can be entertaining, which it is to me. But all the video you'll see is taken in public parks. So personally, if you're looking for locations to mushroom hunt, I recommend going to some public parks and uh, just making sure that they're cool with foraging there. Um, I would also recommend ask uh, maybe somebody in the park uh, if there's any trails that have a lot of old established oak trees. If you can find a trail with old established oak trees, especially for fall mushroom hunting, that's gonna put you in the right place for a lot of good mushrooms. First tip though I wanted to give if you're pretty new to this is get yourself a field guide. So this is the Autobahn Society field guide for wild mushrooms. Uh, this is what I use. Um, it's an all-round excellent guide. It's not an all-inclusive book. I do keep 10 or 15 other books for more thorough analysis, but this is about the best starting point you can have, and it's easy to carry in a backpack, and um, this is probably the third version of this book I've bought because eventually they get destroyed out in the field when we get rained on and whatnot out there hunting. Just know the fall is go time. It's the best season of all four seasons for mushroom hunting. Generally, people would think the spring would be, but in reality, it's probably the worst. I think even winter might be better for mushroom hunting than the spring is. So, anyway, I wanted to give some general overall tips and also show you what some of these actual mushrooms look like and some of the finds and just a few key points on when and where to find them. If you like this video, please check out some of my other videos. I do have uh, quite a few different mushroom-related videos. So subscribe to the channel, check it out, and let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks a lot. You just saw it, didn't you? I was like, is he gonna walk by it? I have never, Look at all those. ever before in my life seen what we're about to walk up on. The biggest batch of chicken mushrooms that I've ever come across. Wow. And they're healthy. We're gonna need a wheelbarrow. Holy smoke. <gasps> and puff balls. Yeah, I think we can probably do without the puff balls. We gotta get this hauled out of here. Guess what? This is just in time for your birthday party, girl. This bag is filled with mushrooms. This bag is filled with mushrooms. This is mushrooms. This is filled with mushrooms. And I think that's still filled with mushrooms. I think we're stocked. Now we do have both Latipris sulfurus and Latipris cincinnatus here. So we're going to can them separately so that we can sort of detect to see if there's any difference in the quality of the end result based on that but this is the latipra sulfurus it has the same orange top but the bottom is sulfur yellow latipra cincinnatus same orange top but the bottom is white it's the only real difference i find that this one with the white bottom seems to be texture wise a little bit drier and a little bit crumblier and to find that uh, this variety tends to peel a little better the latipra sulfurus and uh, the Cincinnatus usually kind of comes apart in chunks as opposed to peeling. Really the only differences I see in the two though. They're both wonderful. Jack lanterns are orange and they have a gill that descends the stalk. And we'll and this was a poisonous mushroom, but what's cool about this mushroom is it glows in the dark. So I'm thinking a glow in the dark test on these things. I'm disappointed. I've been staring at these things in the dark for 15 minutes. My mushrooms don't glow. It's sad, they're broken. So here's another find. These are some ringless honey mushrooms that Rachel just spotted. This is a nice young cluster of them. So we'll take these back and add them into a uh, little uh, stir fry or something. I was just giving up today. I was discouraged. And I actually walked over here and ta-da, hens! My first ones of the year. And when you uh, wanna find a hen, you always look on the other side of the tree because they're always on the other side, never on the same side. Oh, and these are fresh. This is a perfect, perfect, perfect batch of hens. 
There's what you're looking for when you find these. They got little fronds that all atta attach back to a base. They love growing underneath oak trees, which is what we got above us right here. And these woods are going to be littered with them in about another week, but I'm real early for harvesting them in this particular woods. This woods, usually it's closer to and right after the first frost where I find a bunch. Now I've seen online, everybody's finding them, but I got excited and wanted to get out here because I saw everybody else was getting them. We're gonna spend an hour in the woods and I'm gonna walk home with, you know, 15 pounds of mushrooms right here off this one find. Now you can go morel hunting for a long stinking time before you find 10 or 15 pounds of morels. And these stick right out and tell you, hey, I'm over here, come and find me. How easy is that? So sometimes these mushrooms will be a little more gray. Sometimes they're a little more brown. Um, they always have individual little fronds though. They'll vary in their shape and texture just a pinch. Every time you find them, they'll be just a little bit different. And I, th I think the sun not light that hits them and their age are the two biggest factors there. When they pop out in the sunlight, I tend to see them be a little bit more gray. Um, when they're really well shaded, I tend to see them be a little bit more tan or brown. So, I'm just basking in this. I'm enjoying it right now. I, it's been a couple years since I got out uh, and found a maitake, so uh, I'm pretty jacked about this at the moment because on top of finding some maitakes, the other thing you run into in mushroom hunting a lot is you don't find them when they're choice. Like, you'll find them when they're a little too old or right after a big rain and they're filthy. And even though it rained a lot yesterday, these are clean, which tells me they're pretty young. They may have been popping up during the rain. Just like I said, always look around the other side of the tree. Here, on this side of the tree, you see a chicken and it's a little older, but you see the color's a little different on it. They're both great. I mean, these are both choice, prime, maitake mushrooms so i'm gonna harvest all these and uh see if i can get them in my backpack <laughs> so this is what it looks like on the bottom see each of those fronds they it's it's a polypore mushroom which means it doesn't have gills underneath it has tiny little pores and you have to look real close to see the pores it almost looks like hairs on the bottom um, uh, with the naked eye but if you were to look through a microscope you could easily see the, the pores now mushrooming pro tip put clean mushrooms in your bag Every bit of dirt that's on here, it'll be all over it, evenly spread over every mushroom in your bag if you stick them in like this. So get as much dirt and bad stuff off of them before you put them in the bag as you can. And you are gonna make your life a lot easier when you get back home with them. <laughs> I'm a happy guy right now. That's fall mushroom hunting. I don't know, it's heavy. I, I'd have to guess I got probably 30 pounds of mushrooms in, in total on my pack right now. Okay, hey, look, come up here guys. We found a, our first pretty good haul here. These are in good condition. Yay. We got puff balls. You guys want to harvest them? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let's pick them. Yeah. So Annika, here's what we look for. When we find these, you should be able to pull to to break them in half. And when you break it in half, you should see it should be all white on the inside. Whoop. Like this. You see? That means it's not rotting. It's nice and white. And also, you don't see a, an outline of a mushroom inside here. That would be something you'd want to be cautious of with, with puff balls, is to make sure you don't see an outline of a mushroom inside wow, of them. As long as you don't, wide. these are perfect. Wide. This is perfect. That is perfect. Good job. Little pup balls like that are easily distinguished from any uh, any other mushrooms. The real trick with them is just harvesting them at just the right time. They go through that nice white phase pretty quick and they start to dry out and release spores. So when you find them like that, perfect scenario. 
I think they're coprinus mushrooms or they're related to a mica cap. It's an inky mushroom of some kind. I was hoping for shaggy mane set sometime. You know what? I'm going to take these. I'll go back and see if I can get an ID on them. I did have some luck coming back and identifying this mushroom. Uh, it's called an alcohol inky. Um, it is an edible mushroom with caution uh, because it's one of the mushrooms that will uh, render your body unable to remove alcohol from your bloodstream for a period of time. So hence the name alcohol inky. Okay, here. I think I think you got a veiled oyster out there. Okay. That is. I believe that is a veiled oyster. Okay. It's beautiful. Let's see up underneath of it. Okay. Well, thanks for watching our little beginner's guide to fall shrooming. So, if you're the kind of person that likes to get out of the house when the weather starts to get cool, and you like the idea of hauling in massive loads of mushrooms, then fall shrooming is probably for you. Right here, this is just a taste of uh, what we've put away from, from the couple excursions we've shown you in these videos. I think all told, we actually have 30 jars of canned mushrooms that taste just like chicken. These are our hens, and these are our chicken mushrooms. And then back here, we have a big batch of the maitake mushrooms that we're pickling. So there's all kinds of great stuff you can do with them. If you like the idea of that, do me a favor. Subscribe to our channel. I'd like you to tune in next time for our next video. And put a comment down there. Let me know what you think of what we did here today. So, till next time, I'm out of here.